What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video are my three tips to you guys on how to dominate the fretboard, how to learn and know the fretboard like the back of your hand. So in the heat of the battle or whatever, you know where you are, you know where you want to go, and you know how to get there. So without further ado, let's go into tip number one. Well, all right. We're all plugged in here, the Telecaster into the Howard Deluxe, Rick of the Gods, <laughs> ready to check out these three tips to dominate the fingerboard. Tip number one being the not so cool or spectacular tip, but something as simple as you have to know every note on the fingerboard on every fret. And that's just repetitiveness, taking five minutes of your practice routine and reciting the notes so you know them like the back of your hand. You can achieve that in one of two ways. You can go on every string, on every fret individually, like E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, or like G, G sharp, a, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. Right? That's one way to approach it. Another way is you can just bar one fret, right? And what are those individual notes? on the third fret, for example, well, we have G, C, F, B flat, D, G. Let's go now to the seventh fret. We have B, E, A, D, F sharp, B. Let's go now to the 10th fret. We have D, G, C, F, a, D, right? Knowing all the notes on the fingerboard is the first way to unlock it because at which point you can slowly get out of this pattern phase. And once you know the notes in the chord or the scale or in the phrase, you can mix it up and move across the whole fingerboard for ultimate freedom, if that makes sense. An analogy I like to use a lot is thinking of the fingerboard like the white keys on the piano. The white keys on the piano equate to C major or A minor because there are no sharps or flats, right? So it doesn't matter what note you hit, it'll fit in a C major or A minor progression. Think of that like the guitar neck. So if someone says we're in the key of G major, only the G major notes appear on the fingerboard as opposed to the shapes. So if someone says G major and you hit the seventh fret of the high E string, which is that B, you know that's the major third of the chord. If someone says third fret of the A, that's your C, that's your fourth degree. You know that this seventh fret Sorry, this ninth fret of the D string is a B. Again, your major third degree. You know that this 14th fret of the high E string is F sharp, your major seventh degree, right? So the guitar neck is like the white keys on the piano, essentially how I see it. Again, if someone says G major, only the G major notes appears. Someone says we're playing in C major, well, you know, you can hit any note you want as long as it has no sharp or no flats in it. So that's my first tip. You have to know the notes on the fingerboard. Tip number two, something I preach all the time, is you have to know your triads. Not memorize your triads, but you have to know why they work. You have to know where the root, third, and the fifth degree is in the triad, whether it's major, right? 
whether it's minor whether it's diminished which is root flat 3 flat 5 right you know if you do this inversion right here you know you, the 11th fret of the G string is your flat 5 13th fret of the B string is your root 11th fret of your high E string is your flat 3 and that's diminished you can also look at augmented which augmented is root 3 sharp 5 right up the guitar neck, right? And across. Right? These are all essential because when it comes to learning songs, you can break the songs into triads and sort of like voice leading chord progressions. For example, one song that I talk about a lot on this channel is Jack Straw because that's a great song to just break it down into triads. See, everywhere you can learn this song with the least movement, right? You can play D, B minor, A, E. You can do D, B minor, A, E, right? 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 The more places you can learn a song with the least amount of movement, that'll influence you when it comes to soloing, for example. What notes do you want to hit? What phrase do you want to play in that particular area so you're not going crazy around the fingerboard? Which then leads me to the third and final note, scales, right? Not so much patterns, but that's where we we'll start. We'll start with the five major scale patterns, right? You have two octaves. Right? But once you know it two octave, I just played one octave by accident. Ha <laughs> ha, classic. Now let's expand to three octaves. How can we get from the third fret of the low E string to the 15th fret of the high E string? And we can do it slowly. Right? Right? Do that with modes, right? The minor scale, for example, right? Arpeggios. Expand two octave to three octave, right? At which point then you could say, I'm just going to play the notes in this scale. Doesn't have to be in order. So if we're in G major, we know there's one sharp, F sharp. So now we can play every note of that scale around the fingerboard regardless. Again, it was in order. Right? So those are my three tips, three quick tips, we'll call this video, to dominate the fingerboard. It all adds up, knowing all the notes on the fingerboard, triad so you can play a song with the least amount of movement, and knowing your scale is three octave, right, gives you the most freedom 
So at which point you can start a solo, low down the neck. Second solo, get a little bit higher. Third solo, throw in the overdrive and go super high for the rock star solo, right? It all adds up. And all this is just more ways you can practice slowly. Slow and steady wins the race. It's better to really know this stuff like the back of your hand than just memorizing, right? Because you're not really memorizing for a test. You want to really get this idea of knowing the fingerboard into your brain. So the more times you do it, the less you think about it, the less you think, what's happening? Where do I go? But the more you say, how can I play the song to the best of my abilities without thinking? So those are my three tips. Hope it all made sense to dominate the fingerboard. If it did and you liked the video, please press like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.